welcome to another episode of Gizmo Slip Tech. Today we're taking a look at the very high performance, moderately priced $18.99 MSI GP66 Leopard. Taking a look at the specs, the MSI GP66 costs $18.99, comes with an i7-11800H, 8 core 16 threads with 53 watts of TDP under a dual load or 72 watts of TDP when you're on a CPU only load. Now the GP66 has an RTX 3070 with 8 gigs of GDDR6 RAM and it has a base TDP of 125 watts and can go all the way up to 135 watts. Now I want to point out that most laptops about the size of the GP66 typically have a wattage range from about 100 to 130. 30, oftentimes going from 115 to 130. Now the nice thing about the 125 base watt range is that uh, that's a bit higher than most of the gaming laptops out there at this size. Most laptops have about 105 to 115 base wattage for a laptop of this size. So that means that in uh, dual CPU and GPU load video games, you're gonna see an extra boost to your frame rate. A couple examples of games like this would be Call of Duty Warzone and Battlefield 5. You can really see the benefit in games like those on the GP66. Now it comes with 16 gigs of DDR4, 3200 megahertz RAM with two times eight sticks. So you do have dual channel memory here and it does have very fast timings. A great memory test for a laptop is Shadow of the Tomb Raider and this laptop topped out my chart beating every other laptop that I've tested so far. Now my unit had a 314 nit brightness display with 90% sRGB, 70% Adobe RGB, and 72% P3 color gamut with a contrast ratio of 870 to 1. These are solid display stats for a moderately priced machine, but know that if you spend your money elsewhere, you can get a QHD display with higher brightness and color gamut for around the same price, though you will be sacrificing performance to do so. Now this unit comes with a one terabyte PCIe SSD and you have one extra PCIe SSD slot open. I weighed my unit at 5.14 pounds and it is 0.92 inches thick. So this machine is a fairly thin machine and it's fairly portable though it's far from the lightest machine out there. So if you really need to have something that's thinner or lighter, there definitely are some better options out there. Though this I think is um, a nice balance between portability and performance. Now for 3D Mark Time Spy, we got 10,831 stock. Now for Time Spy points per pound, we got 2,107, which is very, very good. And on our Time Spy points per dollar, we got 5.7, which is also very good, but it's not quite as good as the Strix G17 still, because the G17 costs $100 less and basically put up the same score. Now for Cinebench R23, we scored 12,174, which is very, very good. That's 27.6% faster than the i7-10870H in the GE76. I also applied a minus 80 millivolt undervolt to the GP66 and boosted the score to 12,573. And for the single core score, we got 1509, which actually leads the pack out of all laptops that I've tested so far to date. Now for Cinebench R20, with an average of five runs at a throttled score, we got 4770. And with an undervolt, it boosted it up to 4911, though I did get scores over 5200 during the initial turbo boost period. Now with Cinebench R20 points per pound, we got 928, which is solid, but not amazing. And for Cinebench points per dollar, we got 2.51, which is solid, but is nothing amazing. Now for our 4K handbrake render time, we got seven minutes and 51 seconds, beating out every Intel 10th gen laptop CPU that I have ever tested. So overall, the Intel 11th gen should perform really well for multi-core workloads and be just maybe a little bit behind or very competitive with Ryzen 5000 series. Now for my dual load heavy stress test, we run the Heaven Benchmark and the Firestrike physics test at the same time. So we're loading the GPU and CPU up to the max that they can go basically. All right, this is with Cooler Boost Max Fan enabled. Now this is the fan noise for the Extreme Performance Profile. And this is what balanced mode sounds like. 
And this is what silent mode sounds like. So how did the GP66 do? For fan noise, the silent mode is barely audible at 41.2 decibels, though the temperatures do get quite hot at 86 and 81. Now for balance, we get 45.1 decibels, which is gonna be maybe a little bit noticeable if you're in the room with the laptop, but it's unlikely to interrupt other people in the room. Extreme performance, 51 decibels, and max fan, 56.4 decibels. Overall, I think the fan noise on this machine strikes a great balance in the extreme performance or balanced mode, depending on what you need, but you can definitely get some casual gaming done in the silent mode as well if you need to. As far as temperatures go, if you go to the extreme performance, you're gonna be thermal throttling on the CPU pretty much nonstop at 94 degrees Celsius. Now, there are obviously a number of things you can do to improve this. Running your fans at max fans will drop your temps down to 89 degrees. Another great option is going to be undervolting your CPU. If you want to know how much the temperatures drop when you undervolt the CPU, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on the 11th gen Intel undervolting guide and results. Now I think a lot of you are going to ask the same question, is 95 degrees Celsius on the CPU too hot? Now in games that can use multiple CPU cores like Call of Duty Warzone and Battlefield 5, they will cause the CPU to run very hot, potentially thermal throttling or power limit throttling pretty much all the time. And my response to that is that as long as it's not affecting gameplay performance, it shouldn't be much of an issue. And the reason I say that is that Intel says that up to 95 degrees Celsius is perfectly safe for their processors. And so far, we've had no evidence that Intel is wrong, like laptops are not failing left and right. So in my opinion, as long as the thermal throttling at the 95 degrees mark isn't causing stuttering in gameplay, that said, I do prefer to have my CPU run under the thermal limit. So that way, as the CPU paste ages, you don't need to repaste the laptop for optimal thermal performance as often. But even in Warzone, I never noticed any stuttering. Now, the vast majority of games do not utilize the CPU nearly as much and I saw temperatures closer to 75 to 85 degrees most of the time which is fantastic. Now, as far as performance goes, if you're playing a CPU bound game, I really think the extreme performance fan profile will be the one you'll want to select. But for GPU bound games or games where you don't need to push the maximum frame rate, the balanced and silent profiles should work just fine. Taking a look at our 1080p 15 game benchmark averages, the GP66 took a commanding lead within the CPU bound games and tying the more expensive Asus Strix Scar 15 with a 130 watt RTX 3080 at 78 FPS. So what this tells me is that the GP66 is a serious gaming machine and the extra TDP that it has really does give it advantage both in the GPU area of performance as well as the Intel 11th gen really boosting the CPU bound game performance noticeably. Taking a quick look at some of the results, the GP66 topped out my charts in CSGO. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, actually by a noticeable margin. Far Cry 5 at 128 FPS and Watch Dogs Legion at 64 FPS. But when it comes to Red Dead Redemption 2, the GP66 wasn't able to take a win off of the SCAR 15, and I think this is very indicative of 1080p gaming. You really do get a lot of benefit from the Intel 11th gen CPUs if you're gonna game at 1080p. But if you play GPU-bound games or play at higher resolutions than 1080p, then you're much more likely to get more performance out of something like the SCAR 15. So how is it the GP66 is able to put up such superb benchmark numbers and really bring out so much performance? Well, it's a combination of different factors. First of all, this laptop has a MUX switch which will boost CPU bound game performance because of the direct connection from the NVIDIA GPU to the internal laptop display. Second of all, we have a high TDP on the GPU and a high base TDP. I think that's very important to note of 125 watts. And then of course we have Intel 11th gen CPU with the additional PCIe lanes between the CPU and GPU. And last but not least, we also have 3200 megahertz RAM with very good timings. So when you pair all of these things together, you end up with some really, really great performance.
Now, when it comes to speakers, we had 81.1 decibels, which is good. And I do think the speakers sound very reasonable on the GP66, but they're far from amazing. Like I would say they're like pretty average, but they do get fairly loud. So they're pretty good in a quiet room to watch say Netflix or listen to some music, but you kind of have muddled mids and not amazing bass. Now, when it comes to battery life on the GP66, I was not able to get Nvidia Optimus to work properly because the drivers would not update and I tried downloading them from all the different sources. Um, it basically says that the driver is not compatible with your version of Windows currently, even though Windows updates says the laptop is fully up to date. I'm sure this is something that will get resolved in the near future. I'm estimating that this laptop would get at least five hours of casual web browsing away from the wall, but it might be noticeably more than that. I can't test it. So um, I will add an update to the pinned comment if I can get the battery tested. Now the touchpad on the GP66 works quite well. I had no issues with it, but it just doesn't strike me as a super premium feeling touchpad because the click is not quite as precise as it is on the more expensive laptops out there. And I gotta say the keyboard is very, very nice, but sometimes it felt like I was kind of missing a key or two here or there. But as I got used to needing to push basically a little bit harder, uh, I got used to the keyboard and I stopped missing keystrokes. Overall, I really like the layout of the keyboard with the home end page up, page down over on the right side of the keyboard. Uh, it's two giant thumbs up overall for the keyboard and like one and a half thumbs up for the touchpad. The laptop has solid build quality with very minimal flex with the only flex being right around the space bar in the keyboard. Now taking the laptop apart is a pain in the butt requiring a rather complex process of taking off the back lid and then you have to pry it open. I'll just say it's more difficult than average, but not impossible. Okay, so we have a 65 watt hour battery. We have two memory slots, two SSD slots. One of them is already occupied. And then we have our heat pipes here, three big heat pipes, uh, one small one. Um, and you can see that the priority here is definitely to the GPU here because the, the CPU only has one big and one small. I really wish they'd had another third heat pipe here that went between the GPU and CPU because then the temperatures on the CPU would be dramatically better. Now it's really nice that MSI lets you do a lot of advanced things to the CPU. You can actually unlock it, do tons of tweaking. You can tweak your memory timings uh, and you can overclock the CPU, even though this is an 11800H, it's not an HK processor, but you can still set the clock ratios in Intel XDU. You can raise and lower the power limits and you can undervolt the CPU. But here's the thing, because the CPU only has two heat pipes, you're gonna be thermally throttled and power throttled as well pretty quickly no matter what you do. Undervolting will help, but this definitely doesn't show us the true potential of the 11th gen Intel CPUs yet. One really nice thing about the design of the GP66 is that it's rather understated with an all black finish, uh, though it is a slightly thicker chassis. The GP66 can easily fit in at business meetings and in classrooms. If you don't want the RGB keyboard attracting attention, you can just turn it off. Now, there have been a lot of reasons so far in this video on why the GP66 is probably worth buying, but what are the downsides? Why might you want to skip this laptop? The biggest con to the laptop, in my opinion, is that the CPU temperatures are very high, and also I believe that we'll see laptops with much higher TDP on Intel 11th gen CPUs. Like I don't think this is the max potential of the Intel 11th gen. And the reason I think this is because MSI only put two heat pipes to the CPU and that's just not enough to keep the CPU really, really chilled and nice and cool all the time. It allows for moderate levels of performance and consistent performance, but just not like maximum possible peak performance. Another downside of the GP66 is that it is a chunkier laptop than some. So if you want something that's more portable, then the GP66 may not be for you. This is only a 1080p display, and I think many people out there are looking for QHD displays, but if you want like peak performance, then you might have to give up the QHD display at this price point. If you're willing to pay more money, you can probably get a better combination of performance and display quality at the same time. The ports on the GP66 are a bit lackluster. Now on the left side, we have our headset port, 
USB-A and Kensington lock port. On the back, we have our power adapter port, not to be confused with a USB-A port, be careful there. Then we have an HDMI, an ethernet, and a mini display port. And then on the right side, we have two more USB-A's. Now these ports are very fast with USB-A 3.2 Gen 1 and the HDMI and mini display port also support 4K 120 Hertz display outputs. So two giant thumbs up there, but we are missing a full size SD card slot as well as a USB-C. And I feel like USB-C has become like mandatory at this point. So it feels very weird to me that MSI decided to not include USB-C at all. And then it's also missing a Thunderbolt 4 because it doesn't have USB-C. It's really gonna be up to you if you really need a USB-C port on your laptop. And then we have the MSI Center. Now this is MSI's new software replacing the old Dragon Center that used to be on MSI laptops. Overall, I think the software can still be improved. We have a lot of sub menus jumping around when I think a lot of the information could be condensed down down to like one or two pages. Unfortunately, I was not able to update my drivers with the application. That portion of the application just wasn't working for me. So I hope MSI fixes that portion of the application. Now I also wanted to mention, I created a spreadsheet comparing all of the latest gaming laptops with some benchmarks, as well as pricing and links availability to basically everything that's out there on the market in the United States. And in addition, there are some links in the video description down below that if you decide to use the links it does go to help support my channel so thank you very much if you do use those links but as always there is absolutely no pressure to buy only buy when you find a laptop that you think you're going to love overall the MSI GP66 provides great gaming performance for the price while reducing the price by sacrificing some of the premium features compared to the GE66 or a lot of the competitors out there. When it comes to CPU bound gaming, this machine blew me away with its exceptionally high FPS in CPU bound games, while at the same time the GPU bound game performance was excellent due to the high base TDP of 125 watts. If you're after a laptop that has the pure gaming performance, the chops, um, especially if you're a competitive esports type player that plays those CPU bound games like Call of Duty Warzone, this laptop is probably the best laptop money can buy at the $1,900 price point for now. There will be other laptops to compete with this one, but based on the specs that I know and the laptops that are currently available at the time of making this video, this is my number one recommendation for you eSport players out there at this price point. Now for alternative laptops to consider around this price point, you have the Aorus 15P. Uh, that will have more ports and perhaps meet more people's needs, though the TDP on the GPU is a bit lower. I'm not sure about the CPU. Then we also have the Legion 5 Pro as an option or the Legion 7. And then we have the new AMD GPUs coming out for laptops very soon here, and there's gonna be more models and availability. And those GPUs look to have excellent price to performance across the board, though I don't think those particular models will beat the GP66 in the CPU bound games, but for a GPU bound game performance per dollar type of thing, I think the Radeon GPUs will be extremely competitive and definitely worth taking a look at as well. So that's it for my review of the GP66. I hope you enjoyed it. If you found this review helpful, please hit the like button and hit that subscribe button if you wanna see more of my content in the future. I will see you in the next one. Brandon out.